morning, everyone. Well, here's an insight into our viewing habits here in our home. For one of the things we like to do is to watch a program called Location, Location, Location. And it's a program with Kirsty and Phil. Uh, we like to look at the properties. We like all the interaction between Kirsty and Phil, the way they are together. But when we were watching it the other night, one of the things that I noticed when I was watching Location, 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 is against the Channel 4 logo, the top left-hand corner, there were three words. And these three words were, stay at home. As if we need telling uh, these days, well, there you go. Uh, stay at home for Location, Location, Location. It made me think of a couple of things, really. Uh, one is that when we are at home, we are actually in three locations at once, and I'll, I'll say more about that in a second. But also, it reminded me that Jesus taught a lot about being at home. And especially in John's Gospel, it's one of his favourite words to talk about dwelling, talk about abiding. For example, in John chapter 1, we get the word of became flesh and dwelt among us. Or you could translate that as made his home amongst us. Abided really features in John's Gospel, as I say, and particularly uh, in these verses from John chapter 15, which I'll share with you now. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it more, bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Here we go with the abide words. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. And no doubt about it from those passages that are really for Jesus, being a disciple of his is all about us being at home in him and he being at home in us. As I say, we've got to stay at home at the moment. Uh, we've got very little choice in it. But nevertheless, the title of that favourite programme of ours, Location, 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 reminds me to think about two things about my location. First is, obviously, there's a physical home uh, to which uh, we find ourselves stationed at the moment. It's possible to have a house and for it not to be a home. It's possible not to feel at home in the very place where we should feel that we have refuge and security. And there have been many people up and down the country at this time who perhaps feel exactly that way. It may be difficult for some of us to imagine what it must feel like to feel threatened and uneasy and awkward in your own home. So we pray for people such as that. But also, while we're at home, especially if we find ourselves at home with other people, we'll, we'll do our best to be as uh, agreeable and, and make that as a, a pleasant experience, a loving experience as we possibly can for those other people. But then the other location is about feeling at home in our own skins. It's a great gift if you can actually feel at home with yourself in your own skin. You very often know when you're in the presence of someone who is at home with themselves because 
they make you feel comfortable and, and relaxed around them. Uh, very often it's the people that make you feel awkward or or uncomfortable. Uh, these are the people perhaps are wrestling with things in their own minds. One of the things I guess that prevents people from being at home with themselves are two key words that we often use in the Christian vocabulary. One is guilt, the other is shame. Very often people confuse these two things, but really guilt is just basically saying, I did a bad thing. Shame is when we say, I am bad in myself. So perhaps in these days where we're forced to be in one location, which is at our home, might actually just reflect on how much we do feel at home with ourselves. And if it's guilt and shame that prevents us from being at home in that kind of way in our own skin, might want to think about Jesus, who died to take away our guilt and our shame. And the last location, of course, is just simply feeling that we can be at home with God. As I said, John loves his language of abiding and, and dwelling. But Luke also has a, a story about somebody who came home after he'd gone away and gone astray. Prodigal son, of course. And when he returns home, even before he can utter his research, rehearsed speech, he, he finds the father rushing out to welcome him home. He's not only accommodating, but he lavishes his, his love upon the son who really doesn't deserve it. I wonder if we can spend some time in these days of enforced isolation and find ourselves in one particular location to ask ourselves questions about how much we feel at home in the love of God. And perhaps remember the words of the famous hymn, Love only waits to forgive and forget. Home, weary wanderer, home. It's my prayer for you that if you do share your home with other people, that you can all feel at home together. It's my prayer for you that as you come out the other side of this, you'll have been able to do so much prayerful reflection on your own life that you'll feel more at home in your own skin. Something will have been done about those feelings of guilt and shame. It's my prayer for you that you can feel at home in the heart of God knowing that love does only wait to forgive and forget. And perhaps as we think about those who have to experience the worst of this crisis, we'll also remember that Jesus promised, I go to prepare a place for you. See, in my Father's house, there are many rooms. And so we put our trust in the mansion builder and we pray that as he abides in us, we also may abide in him. Amen.